Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 140 of Who Civic Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode. We are playing the quarterfinal of the Champions League, taking on AC Milan, a team which we did beat in the first knockout round of this competition last season. We have also got a bit of a domestic update and we have also signed a few players off of the next gen list. So we'll take a look and see how promising those guys do appear. So if you are looking forward to today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we do find ourselves in the quarterfinals off the back of the first knockout round at the end of last week, where we did just scrape through over Sevilla off the back of a very, very boring second leg. But if you did miss that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. We did also spend a lot of money on a backup defensive midfielder who will be joining us in a couple of months' time at the end of this European season. But before we do have a look at today's opposition in AC Milan, a quick recap on what has happened domestically in and around that tie against Sevilla. At the end of last week, we were in the middle of the deal to Bacar at that stage, about halfway through it. Either side of that, we did win the remaining three games of our group. 6-0 against Lechnia Reykjavik, 1-0 away at Keflavik. Quite a big result that because Keflavik, certainly one of the bigger teams in our group in that competition. And then we backed up that nil all draw against Sevilla with a 9-0 win against Viking. It would have been quite nice if we used some of those goals in that second leg against Sevilla, but we did enough in that first league to make sure we did go through 2-0 into the quarterfinals of the Champions League. That meant that we did have a semi-final that we did make our way through to. We bet Viking a 4-0 in that one with our first choice 11. And going into the final, we then took on HK. We did have to put our rotated team for this game because it was just too close to this first leg of the Champions League quarterfinal. But thankfully, we still got the job done there thanks to three second half goals. Mariano from the penalty spot. Patrick Nygaard, and then our young striker who's come through. We signed him a few years ago. He's been on trial up until recently, but Nolik Voskanyan, the young Armenian who does have five-star potential, he came off the bench to get the final goal for us there, and we pick up a 3-0 win and pick up the deal to Bacar here in the save for the 11th time, which is very nice indeed. A good little boost going into this Champions League quarterfinal, picking up our first trophy of the season, but before we do have a look at AC Milan, we have also, as I mentioned, signed some players off of the next gen list who were available. And so far, three of those players who we did offer contracts to have joined us. I think there is one more who might be in the works who might be joining us later on in today's episode. But the first of those, we did spend around about 1.25 million on these players, which is not too much when you consider how much money we did have in our transfer budget for this season before that signing of Elaine Basicki, but the first one of them for £525,000 was Myleta Rosic out of Kukuriki Stankom. He does not quite look as good as I was hoping for off of that next gen list, only two and a half star potential. He might be a player who we do look to ship out in a year or so's time to a fellow Icelandic club, but he is a right back, not as much potential as we were hoping, but that has been made up by the other two signings that we have made so far. From that next gen list, first off a player from Sparta Prague there in Plimisil Bokic, I believe is how you might say that name. He joins us. He's a left back, only one and a half star current ability, but five star potential, even though four stars of it are gold. So it might not be that high, but he does look like a very, very promising left back. Hopefully he develops into that and should get some first team football in a couple of years time, probably once he gets around about the two or two and a half star ability mark. That is a very good bit of business for only £53,000. And off the back of that, we signed a really promising right back off of that next gen list as well. It's been quite a deep one in terms of defenders and wing backs this year, the next gen list. And we signed Radenko Krolo out of Hajduk split, £750,000 compensation, but that looks well and truly worth it already. He's a player I've lined up to be our backup right back in behind Levan Tam for this upcoming domestic season. And maybe we can register him for next season's Champions League as well. Two and a half star current ability, five star potential, albeit yet again, only four of those stars are gold, but he's going to get some early first team football here at 17 years old. Is the Croatian in that backup team, as I said, which should do his development the world of good. He could end up being 
a very, very good right back for us in the save. So, so far, that rating of the next gen list looks like it's really going to pay dividends for us over the next few years in terms of our wing backs coming through at the club. And we do still have a few more other players who might be signing for us off of that list. As well, in terms of players on the next gen list, we did only have one this year. It was again Hercules Delfino, and again, he was around about the 34 mark this season, I believe, which is pretty similar to where he was on that next gen list last season. But that wraps up our transfer business that we have done off the back of that episode at the end of last week, and we are about to take on AC Milan in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. They currently find themselves in second in City are albeit a fair way behind Juventus, 13 points behind with a game in hand, but still that is a long way behind what looks like it is going to be the Italian champions there in Juventus with only a few games left in that league season, but still second on the City are, so they are doing a decent job. We did take these guys on last season, we just got the job done over them in the first knockout round in terms of their team, it looks very, very similar as well, so hopefully we can get through yet again to the semi-finals, the final four of the Champions League. Of course, the other tie that we are going to be keeping an eye out on in these quarterfinals because we have had the draw for the semi-final as well. That is the tie between Manchester United and Chelsea. If we can get past AC Milan, we are playing the winner of that tie. But it's a team that we bet last season. Hopefully, we can do the same again here. We've got no injury concerns or suspension concerns at all heading into this one. So we are at full strength. And we'll come back shortly from the San Siro, which is the hosting ground of the final this season. So a good result here would be quite useful indeed. And we'll see if we can take a decent result into the home league of this Champions League quarterfinal. And here are the team sheets for the first league of this Champions League quarterfinal. There is AC Milan, as I said before, for the most part, that looks like a very similar team to the one that we did take on in the first knockout round last season. In terms of us, as I said, we are at full strength and hopefully we can get a decent result here to take back to Iceland for that second leg. And up to the 21 minute mark for our first highlight, AC Milan were on the attack there, but thankfully Elias Anderson does get an interception. So far, they have been the more dominant team stats wise and we have picked up an early yellow card in Chaka Traore, the former AC Milan man who did score the decisive goal in the home leg last season. He's picked up an early yellow card, but hopefully... We're going to do something here in this first highlight of the game, albeit Kalen Rakasan plays that all the way back to Huel Lerbeck. And now Elias Anderson, who did get the ball back for us before, plays that up on our left-hand side. Nice ball there for Lasana Dumbia puts that in the bottom right corner, but was he offside? The AC Milan defenders are complaining, and indeed, there is going to be a VAR check. We'll just wait here and see what Michael Oliver says, and indeed, the goal has been disallowed, so it will remain nil all here about halfway through the first half, albeit that looks like a very debatable call there, not too sure about that one, but nonetheless still nil all at the 24 minute mark. And 10 minutes off the back of that first highlight, we are down the other end here for a Milan corner and they do get their head on the end of that, I think it was Tamore there who got his head on the end of that, but thankfully a good save from Huel Lerbeck as well as a clearance off the line from Lev Van Tam. there you can see the goal line technology, it was pretty clear it didn't go over the line and it does remain nil all with 10 minutes left of the first half. And coming up towards the 40 minute mark, we start off here with a goal kick to AC Milan. They pump this deep and Basaroge does win the ball back for us here and Kenny Borri will play that back to Elias Anderson. Still nil all, not too sure if that should be the case. That questionable offside decision, good chance there for Adam Saki. It comes off the post, still nil all with five minutes left in the first half of the first league. And it is half time here in this first league. You can tell by the stats there, we're actually being outplayed quite considerably so far. So quite happy that the scoreline is still all square, albeit most of the highlights that we have seen have actually been in our favor, including that quite questionable offside call there on Lasana Dumbia, but not too disappointed, quite happy. It's all square when you consider those stats. We'll tell the boys they could potentially do a little bit better. We'll make no changes though, going into the second 45 minutes of this first league still locked up at nil all. And only a few minutes into the second half, AC Milan here do have a throw inside our final third. Nice ball over the top there, but thankfully just a little bit too much on that one. And Huel Lubick does come out and claim possession for us. And he's going to roll this out here to one of our defenders. He picks out Ali Ramadan. He takes his time on the ball here. And hopefully we can create another chance here early in the second half and potentially even take a lead back to Iceland for that second league because so far 
despite the stats, most of the highlights here have been in our favor. Chaka Traore, just inside the byline, Sly Tickle, he gets two people marking him there, but Kalen Rickerson, great chance, but a good save there by the AC Milan goalkeeper. That was an absolute sitter on the second attempt there for Kalen Rakasan, but unfortunately hits it straight at the goalkeeper. They deal with the corner there. Do AC Milan still nil all early on here in the second half of the first league. And just past the hour mark, we do have our next highlight, which is good because we're just starting to even things up slightly here stats-wise. So it looks like the momentum in the second half is with us at the moment. Nice ball over here for Lasana Dumbia. Can he put this one away? It's a good block there. I think it was in the end by the AC Milan defence and still nil all here with 25 minutes left. And not too long off the back of that most recent highlight, Bussero Gay playing well, but has gone down to a red heart. What I think we're going to do here, because usually Lasana Dumbia does go down to a red heart, so we'll just make the safe change early. Tiago Polo to come on for Gay and Ramadan to go forward into the DM role for the last 20 minutes. And very shortly off the back of that first substitution, we're going to make a few others. Unfortunately, this time it's actually Ali Ramadan who's gone down to a red heart. Also, Nicholas Zimmerman on a red heart yellow card and has picked up a little bit of an injury. So Fabio Mariano will come on for him. We're actually going to have to put Corral Giroux in the DM role as well with Ramadan going down to a red heart. Those are all our subs used. 17 minutes left, and it's still nil all. And very shortly off the back of those last few substitutions, yet again, we start off here with Fuel Lurvik playing it short, and we get that out to Levan Tam. Plays that in there for Dumbia. He's going to have to last the whole 90 minutes today, which is something he hasn't done too much so far in this Champions League campaign, but today it does look like he is one of the players with more energy than he usually does have in this team. Nice ball out there for Chaka Traore, but unfortunately, Saki can't quite control it, and now AC Milan will look to create something here. They haven't looked too threatening in the highlights we've seen so far in this game, despite the stats being in their favour. We just do get a bit sloppy there, though, down our left-hand side, and they might get a chance here. Amalai puts this into the mix. A good chance there for Bully on an orange injury. But his header goes wide, still nil all with about 10 minutes left. And with five minutes left in this one, we have just started to implement some of our time-wasting stuff because sometimes we actually score goals when we do that. But AC Milan here do have a late free kick. Interesting slide tackle there on Sidibe without winning the ball. And they are still on the attack here. Uh, AC Milan, Amaral just inside the byline, plays that back for Tomori just outside the box. They work their way inside now. Amaral right on the edge, puts a ball in there for Kjargaard, but thankfully that shot is blocked, hopefully. That's the highlight Levan Tam indeed does get possession back for us. And it looks like here we might end up drawing the away leg. It's a nil all, but certainly a more entertaining nil all, provided it does stay that way and there's no late highlights than we did see at the end of last week against Sevilla. As I said, we certainly even things up stats-wise there in that second half in the end. Our XG was actually higher than AC Milan's. A very questionable first highlight there, that goal that was ruled out against Lasana Dumbia, so we could really be taking a 1-0 lead back to Iceland, but enough encouraging signs there that hopefully we can get the job done back at home and yet again make our way through to the semi-finals of the Champions League, but a pretty even game, can't complain too much there about the drawn scoreline, even though that goal was ruled out, as I said, rather questionably there against Lasana Dumbia, I think it is fair to say, but we are certainly still right in this one, going back to Iceland, for the second leg of the Champions League quarterfinals. Yet again, we'll come back shortly, just do a little domestic check-in before we do get into that second leg and also see how some of the other ties are looking before we play Milan back at the Laugardas Villa. And we are back about to play the second leg of this quarterfinal against AC Milan, all locked up still at nil all as we do go to the Laugardas Villa. But between now and then, we did play the Super Cup final here in Iceland against HK and picked up our second trophy of the season, very convincing 5-1 win there with our rotation team. Five different goal scorers, Ben Musa, one of our former players, did get the goal for HK, so we pick up an early season double. So hopefully we're on track yet again here for the domestic quad ruple. But what we do need to check in on a little bit more is the other results from the quarterfinals of the Champions League. We are playing on the Wednesday. That means we already know who we could be playing potentially in the semi-finals, should we make it that far? And it is Chelsea after they won the second leg 4-2. They go through 5-4 on aggregate there over Manchester United on the other side of the draw. Inter Milan get the better of Juventus, which is a little bit of a surprise when you looked earlier at that Serie A table when we were checking out AC Milan. But Inter are through 
off the back of a 3-2 aggregate win, so pretty close ties so far. Man City have a quite nice lead there going into the second leg of their tie against Lille, and we are all locked up here against AC Milan, potentially slightly in our favour with this being our home league, but you never know it's a good AC Milan team. But we did win in this game last season, hopefully we can do the same yet again. AC Milan do have a quite serious injury, one of their strikers, Shermity, he is out, so that means they might be changing a few things around up front for this one, so that's a notable out there for AC Milan. In terms of us, Nicholas Zimmerman, it was a very minor injury, so he should be fine here for this upcoming game. He's a little bit short on fitness, but he's been given the all clear, so we're going to start him exactly the same starting 11 as we did have there for that first leg. But on the bench, Hercules Delfino comes in for Frederick Larson. That's because Jonata is now a lot more familiar at playing left wing, can also go out right and striker. So I think he's a little bit more of a better bench option now than Frederick Larson with that higher potential. So Frederick Larson, club captain, makes his way off the bench with Jonata and Delfino being our attacking options there alongside Fabio Mariano, but we'll come back shortly and hopefully for the second straight season, make our way through to the semi-finals of the Champions League as it will be nil all as we kick things off from the Lao Gardas Villa. And we're up to the half hour mark here in the second leg. Unfortunately, it's not a highlight, but Nicholas Zimmerman has picked up another orange injury. Apparently, he can play on, but I'm just not too sure about it. So we're going to make an early change here. Fabio Maliano to come on with an hour left of this one. We are still locked up at nil all. And we have to go all the way forward to the 39 minute mark for the first highlight of the second leg. Yet again, AC Milan have started things off a little bit more strongly in terms of stats. And it does look like this first highlight might be in their favour as Kessie takes his time there on the ball, plays that back to Fieti, who I think from memory had a little bit of a shocker there against us last season, but there's a nice ball over the top from Kessie, and Yvonne Simons puts that in the back of the net, so maybe that injury to Germany is not going to harm them as much as I thought, and that is a little bit of a concern here. We were pretty good defensively at home last season in the knockouts of the Champions League, at least until we took on Real Madrid, but with the first highlight, Simons gets that in behind our defence, puts it away top right corner, and it is AC Milan 1, Volsung and nil. not too long here before half time, albeit just as I say that, they are on the attack here, yet again, Ruggieri makes his way inside the box, tries to square that, Tenali finds Verts, and now it is still AC Milan here inside the final third, good interception there from Chakatrare, can't quite link up there with Saki, good shot there from Simons, yet again, that just Goes high and wide so far, AC Milan, with all the highlights here in this first half. And it does look like they might go into halftime with a 1-0 lead, albeit we do now have a highlight very late on here. Hopefully, we can do something with it and potentially get this back to all square going into the second half. This would be a really good time to score right before we do head into the sheds because 1-0 down in the home leg. Not too ideal, but somehow Saki gets that beyond Fiate and puts it in the back of the net, albeit with a lot of help there from the underside of the crossbar. As I said, Fiate does look quite vulnerable defensively the few times that we have played AC Milan in the knockouts of the Champions League. And thankfully, we do get this back to all square right before half time. Somehow Saki gets it beyond him. Very good finish there, just with a fair bit of help from the underside of the crossbar. And with our first highlight, we do make it one all going into halftime. And that is a bit of a relief. Still not too happy with how we are doing because AC Milan are dominating things stats-wise. We'll make no changes going into the second half. One all with 45 minutes left of this quarterfinal. And only a few minutes into the second half it is AC Milan here with a free kick. Florian Verts is going to pump this into the box. Far post and Fiate gets his head. On the end of that, absolutely no idea there about Will Lurvik's positioning. That was very, very sketchy, despite the commentary there blaming Boreal, which is interesting. Will Lurvik, not too sure what he's doing there. And just as we talk him down, Fiate gets a goal. And AC Milan are back in front here early in the second half. And up to the hour mark, we're going to make our last couple of substitutions at this time after that earlier one in the first half. Both our wingbacks not on great ratings here, so Ian Carlo will come on for Levan Tam Harwood, for Boreal, still half an hour left, and we are still 2-1 down. And with 20 minutes left here, we do have a throw, and Ian Carlo's going to try and put this inside the box. Kjargaard heads that back out, but we are still in possession here, and make our way yet again 
into the final third, albeit we do give the ball away briefly, but they hoof that clear and some good hustle there from Elias Anderson. We have 20 minutes left now to try and grab an equaliser, but lots of numbers here. Mariano will put that away, surely. He is onside, arguably. We shouldn't even be in this position after that goal that was ruled out in the first leg, but surely that is onside. We grab an equaliser and we are right back in this one with 20 minutes left. Big overlap there when Saki was on the ball. We use it well. Fabio Mariano beats the goalkeeper at his near post to all with 20 minutes left. And very shortly off the back of that equaliser, we are back down the other end here for an AC Milan highlight. And they are inside the final third. Alvarez here just on the edge of the box. Tamore Tanali plays that back in for Alvarez. Kiar Garden Simons puts that. In the back of the net, and just after we grab an equaliser, I think AC Milan will go back in front here, and we might be on our way out of the Champions League, although VAR is going to check it, and the goal has been disallowed. That does look a little bit controversial, might make up for the one that was ruled out earlier, albeit I do think Simons there might be offside, even though the lines don't quite match up. So thankfully, it is still all square with 18 minutes left. And lots of action happening here between the 70 and 80 minute mark. 75 minutes gone and we do have a throw in near enough to the halfway line. Ian Carlo is in behind here for us. Just starts to make his way towards the byline. Lasana Dumbia for Bussero Gay. He finds the bottom left corner that is very reminiscent of a goal that he scored against Bayern Munich last season. And we are now for the first time in this tie in front and in this game at home as well because so far... AC Milan really taking it to us, but that's a wonderful strike there from Bussero Gay, free to Volsinger with 14 minutes left. And just after implementing some time-wasting tactics off the back of that goal to put us in front, we do see the restart here. So hopefully we're not going to concede an equaliser immediately, although Kjargaard here is in a little bit of space down the left-hand side, albeit Ali Ramadan with a good header there as we look to play out from the back, albeit looks a little bit sketchy, but Huel Lurvik Pumps this deep. Chakatrari wins this. And Saki can't quite get past Fiate this time. And Simons gets on the end of that long ball forward. Although, thankfully, a poor first touch. And Elias Anderson is able to get position back for us. Hopefully, we can just hold on now. Because for most of this game, we have been behind. Or at least haven't been in front. So, hopefully, we can make the most of that nice ball here. For Lasana Dumbia. But a good slide tackle there to keep that shot from testing the goalkeeper. That is the highlight with about 10 minutes left. We are still free to up. And we have entered the last few minutes of this one. Hopefully no more highlights as we wait to see exactly how much minutes of injury time we do have. There is four minutes. You could actually argue here, AC Milan getting a little bit FM'd here because in terms of shots and shots on target, we haven't had quite as many, but we've been just about effective enough with them. And we pick up a free two win. That was a very, very topsy-turvy game but thankfully despite the fact that over both legs really AC Milan had more shots and more shots on target our XG was actually better across both legs and we make the most of it especially in that second leg we pick up a 3-2 win that is thanks in large part to that final goal there to Bassero game with 14 minutes left and we are making our way through to the semi-finals for the second straight season we will be taking on Chelsea as well so that is one of the Champions League semi-finals. I'd imagine the other one is going to be between Inter Milan and Manchester City, which is quite interesting, of course, because Inter Milan did go through above Man City in the group stages of this year's Champions League. But we take on Chelsea in the other semi-final that is provided that Man City have not completely blown things after picking up a 2-0 win in the first leagues. We'll just wait and see. And indeed, they have quite comfortably got the job done. They go through 5-0 on aggregate, but for the second straight season, we are in the semi-finals of the Champions League, taking on Chelsea off the back of a narrow 3-2 win there against AC Milan. And back in the inbox off the back of that narrow win there against AC Milan, it was certainly a little bit more hairy than it was last season, albeit it was a late goal there, but we weren't quite as solid defensively as we were at home at last season, but we still get the job done by one goal, and for the second straight season are through to the Champions League semi-finals, so definitely some good progress being made in this save now, we are going to be taking on Chelsea. We do have another injury here to Nicholas Zimmerman, but yet again, it is a pretty minor one. He will be absolutely fine for that semi-final coming up in about two weeks' time when we don't actually have a competitive game in between now or then either. So that is going to be our next game coming up 
in tomorrow's episode and we are going to be taking on the current second place team in the Premier League. A quick look at that and they're actually in a decent title fight here with Manchester United. So maybe Chelsea are actually the strongest team left out of the English ones in the Champions League this season because Man City, I think it's fair to say, despite having a few games in hand, are a fair way behind Chelsea there, but we are going to be taking on those guys in tomorrow's episode. A quick look at what they look like. Obviously, four and a half star reputation club. Actually expected them to be five star reputation, but they do have these days. Pep Guardiola in charge. That is, of course, because Vincent Company was at Man City. Thomas Tuchel is at Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp's at Real Madrid. There's been a big managerial shuffle up in the save, but tomorrow we take on Pep Guardiola's Chelsea. I'm still not sure if he's actually won a Champions League in England in this save, so maybe we can hopefully worry him out of that in the semi-finals and potentially go one step further than we did last season and try and win our first European trophy and make it the big dog one as well, being the Champions League. But coming up tomorrow, it's going to be very tough. That does look like an exceptionally strong Chelsea team. Pep Guardiola will be interesting to see if we can make our way through to our first Champions League final. And just quickly before we do wrap things up today, we did sign one more player off of that next-gen list, as I suggested. It is a Japanese international as well, so quite a good pick up there from that next-gen list, despite the fact he is going to be a foreigner, and we did actually pay $1.4 million in compensation for him, but he is quite a promising left-winger here. And Tomohiro Horikawa, he comes to us, having previously been at Gambo Osaka, four-star potential, so not quite as promising is some of those wingbacks that we did sign earlier in today's episode, but hopefully he can prove to be a decent option for us in the future, especially once someone like Chakachari, who these days, at being around 28 years old, he might start to regress soon, so this could be a good future option. In that position for us here, the young 18-year-old Japanese international, seven caps for the full-strength men's team there, and he has six goals as well, so it does look like quite a lethal option. In front of goal, potentially overpaid for him, a little bit but hopefully even if we do look to get rid of him in the future we can still make money on that deal but we've done some good work so far off of this year's next gen list and hopefully that will set the club up well for future success especially in the Champions League now that we are I think it's fair to say consistently staying to reach the final four of that competition but that will do it for today's episode for the semi-finals of the Champions League taking on Chelsea if you did enjoy that win there over AC Milan then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. And until tomorrow for the Champions League semi-final against Chelsea, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.